Now, who can explain Newton's method and how you use it? Uh, you can use it to solve nonlinear equations. That is correct. That's impressive. Uh, that's, that's really good. I mean, I'm very impressed by that, especially since my class is called Nonlinear Equations. <laughs> All right, now somebody tell me something I don't already know. Anyone? Bueller. Anyone? Bueller. Um, Newton stole it. Newton stole it. No. It's not true. I'm sorry? Newton stole it. Joseph Raphson published the same method 50 years earlier. That's impossible! I want the truth! explain Newton's method and how you use it. Who can explain Newton's method and how you use it? Glad you asked! Magagamit ang newton raphson method sa pag-solve ng roots ng isang function. Ang isang root ay ang value ng x na gagawing zero ang function. Maraming problems ang pwedeng ipose bilang isang root finding problem kaya malawak ang application ng newton raphson method. Halimbawa, gusto nating malaman ang root xr ng function na to. Ang unang gagawin ay manghula lang kung ano ang xr. Sabihin natin na x1 ang unang hula or estimate kay xr. Makukompute ngayon ang value ng function sa x1, pati na rin ang derivative ng function sa x1. Ang derivative ay ang slope ng tangent line. Ang intersection ng tangent line at ng x-axis ang magbibigay ng pangalawang estimate kay xr. As mentioned, ang derivative ay ang slope ng tangent line sa x1. Kaya equal ito sa rise over run or f of x1 minus 0 over x2 minus x1. Masasolve ngayon mula sa equation na to si x2. Kapag alam na si x2, ulitin lang ang proseso. Computein ang f of x2 at f prime of x2. I-express ang derivative bilang rise over run at isolve ang x3 na bagong hula or estimate kay xr. Pansinin na lumalapit ng lumalapit ang mga successive estimates kay xr. Therefore, ang equation natin para sa next estimate, x n plus 1, given a current estimate, x n, ay ganito. Ito ang essence ng newton raphson method. Again, para makuha ang root ng isang function, take a guess muna. Let x1 be the first estimate kay xr. Compute f of x1 at f prime of x1, find the intersection ng tangent line at x-axis to get x2, and then repeat the process. Compute f of x2 and f prime of x2, find the intersection ng tangent line at x-axis to get x3, and then repeat the process. Ang intersection ng tangent line at x-axis ay makukuha mula sa equation for the derivative as the slope of the tangent line. Therefore, x n plus 1 equals x n minus f of x n divided by f prime of x n. Minsan, kung mali ang unang hula, the process will be stuck in a loop. Hindi imposible na ang x n ay magiging x1 ulit. Minsan naman, imbis na lalapit ng lalapit sa x r ang mga x n, lalayo pa ng lalayo. Posible rin na maging 0 ang derivative. 
that is horizontal ang tangent line at walang intersection sa x-axis. So as you can see, ang Newton-Raphson method ay hindi laging nag-work. If the start value is too far removed from true zero, then it fails. That is correct. Pero kung nag-work naman siya, ay mabilis at ilang iterations lang. Ang graphical interpretation ng Newton-Raphson method ay limitado lang sa pagkuha ng real roots. Pero kung iisipin natin na isa itong linear approximation method, mas general ang application niya. Kung ang x1 ay isang estimate kay xr, pwede nating isulat si xr bilang x1 plus some error or displacement from x1 na delta x1. Pero ano ngayon itong delta x1? Since xr is a root, f of xr is 0. xr is also x1 plus delta x1, so f of x1 plus delta x1 is also 0. Ngayon, pwede nating i-approximate ang function sa vicinity ni x1 bilang isang line na may slope na f prime of x1. Therefore, f of x1 plus delta x1 is approximately f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times delta x1. Zero ang left hand side, kaya we can get an estimate of delta x1 bilang negative of f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. Therefore, a better estimate for xr ay x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. Tawagin natin ang bagong estimate na to na x2. So we can write xr as x2 plus some error or a displacement from x2 delta x2. Again, using a linear approximation, we can estimate delta x2 as negative f of x2 divided by f prime of x2. This gives us a new estimate x3. So we can write xr as x3 plus some error or displacement from x3 delta x3. We can approximate the displacement as negative f of x3 divided by f prime of x3. Therefore, the next estimate can always be written in terms of the current estimate like this. This is the essence of the Newton-Raphson method. Uulit-ulitin lang ang proseso hanggang halos hindi na nagbabago ang values ng mga xn. Who can explain Newton's method and how you use it? How you use it? Gamitin natin ang Newton-Raphson method sa pag-solve ng problem na to. Given a ball na may radius na 5 cm at a specific gravity na 0.6, gaano kalalim ang ilulubog nito sa tubig? Computein muna natin ang volume ng isang spherical cup na may height h. We can do this by slicing the volume into disks with differential thickness dy. Ang differential volume dv ay ang area ng disk times the thickness dy. Ang radius ay x na related kay y at r through the equation for a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Thus, dv equals pi times r squared minus y squared times dy. Summing up the differential volumes from r minus h to r, in other words, integrating, we get pi times r h squared minus one third h cube as the volume of the spherical cup with height h and radius r. Simply lang ang physics ng buoyancy. Ang force of buoyancy ay equal sa weight of the displaced water na equal naman dapat sa weight ng sphere para hindi ito tuloy ang lumubog. Weight is mass times g and mass is density times volume, so we have this equation. From it, we get this. Take note that by definition, a specific gravity is the density of something relative to the density of water. Substituting the volume of the spherical cup, which is the part of the sphere submerged in water, which is also equal to the volume of water displaced, and also the volume of the entire sphere, we get this. After some algebra, we get this cubic equation, which we will now solve using the Newton-Raphson method. We can go ahead and plot this function and see that it has three real roots. Having the advantage of foresight, we know that these roots are negative 3.98, 5.67, and 13.3. Isa lang sa mga to makes sense. Ang hinahanap natin na h ay obviously hindi negative at hindi mas malaki sa diameter ng sphere. In other words, ang sagot ay 5.67 cm. Paano natin ito makukuha using the Newton-Raphson method? Ang function ay x cubed minus 15x squared plus 300. 
kaya ang derivative ay 3x squared minus 30x. Pwede gawin ang computation sa isang spreadsheet program. Kung 2 ang una nating hula in just 4 iterations, makukuha na natin ang sagot na 5.67 cm. Graphically, ganito ang nangyari. Kung 1 naman ang gawing unang hula, magkukonverge sa root na 13.305. Kung negative 2 ang gawing unang hula, magkukonverge sa root na negative 3.976. Mapapansin na kailangan ang derivative para mag-work ang newton raphson method. Pero minsan, hindi pwedeng makuha ang derivative analytically. Kaya ang solution ay estimate ang derivative bilang slope ng second line. Ang tawag sa variation na to ay second method. I'm sorry, what's your name? Uh, ben. Uh, ben Campbell. Ben! So Ben Campbell suggests that Joseph Raphson was the original author of this method. Well, if that's the case, then why didn't he get any credit? Well, for one thing, Newton had a better publicist. <laughs> and for another, after 1700, we know very little about Raphson other than the fact that he discovered the...